Hello everyone, this is Gail, and I'm today I'm going to do something entirely different than anything I've done before. Well, I say done before, at least done a video on before. I'm going to make an eight-sided box out of polymer clay. Now you wonder, how can you do an eight-sided box? No, it's not rectangle. It's actually going to be almost square, and I'll show you that in a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. But I drew out a diagram. Actually, let me go back and tell you where I found this. Um, I'm, I've told you before that I have been doing polymer clay for 20 years now. In 2020, it was 20 years. And... Um, I was really into watching the Carol Duvall show. I don't know if any of you ever remember the Carol Duvall show. She was like the uh, the craft person there for so many years. And she always had guests that came to her uh, show. And that's where I discovered polymer clay. Donna Cato came, was on the very first Carol Duvall show that I ever watched. And I saw what Donna did with clay, and I was mesmerized. So I ran out and bought some clay and came home and failed terribly. <laughs> but I kept on plugging away and kept watching videos, or not videos, back then we didn't have videos, but kept watching the, all the TV shows. I recorded all of the Carol Duvall shows that, you know, because they came on during the day when I worked. And then I would watch them in the evening, because I had moved to Florida and uh, was there alone. My family was here in Virginia. So it really was kind of hard for me to, uh, to find things to do until I met people. So I um, would sit in the evenings and watch the recordings of the Carol Duvall show. So one day, and I wish I had written it down. I wish I had written it down. But back when, uh, like I said, this was before computers got, I mean, I had a computer, but I didn't do things like this on it. I um, would watch the show that was recorded so I could stop it, and I made all kinds of notes on different projects I wanted to do. And this was one of them. And the only thing that I can remember, and I wish I had written it down, I know i said that before, but I know it was a man that was on her show that did this eight-sided box, and I had been—I was just taking notes like crazy, except for his name. Isn't that terrible? But anyway, during my move last September, I was cleaning out so many different things, and I happened to come across this book, this composition book that had my... Carol Duvall notes in it, and this was one of them, and I went, you know, I never made that box. So now I'm going to make it, and hopefully you will enjoy it. But this is the template, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan this and attach it as a file in the description below so that you can print this out if you want to. But all I did is I cut a piece of cardstock that was two inches by nine inches. And after I cut it into the two by nine inch, I also cut a two by two. This is the bottom. But after I did that, I measured off, let me get my needle tool, move my tool cart closer to me, and I marked off two inches, two inches, two inches, two inches, and two inches. Of course, it left an inch here at the end. Then I turned it over and measured two inches, two inches, two inches, two inches, and there was another inch left over, and that was on the other side. I've marked it with a pen just so you can see the lines, but I didn't or you know, use the lines normally. But um, then I, on all of my mark, I, well, you can do this. You can. I just took my score pal and laid it 
on there at the little marks that I made on the two inch spots and then scored a line. But I drew the line and that might be the easier way for you to do that because this is going to be just to support your clay while you're making the box. But I scored all of these lines and then you fold them and you fold them all in the same direction. If you're folding in, you fold them all in. If you're folding out, you fold them all out. But you end up with this. Oh, and I know one thing I did not get, and hopefully there's some right here in my drawer. There is. Oh, I love my new desk. Anyway, if you take this and fold it up and then put these sides together, and tape them. I folded these under just because I you want the ends you want them to meet on the inside. And then if you look at the top, you have a square top. And if you look at the bottom, you've got a square bottom. But if you look at the sides, you've got these eight sides. I just think that is so cool. But let me just tape these together. If you hear any noises in the background, that's my new puppy. I've uh, given him a chewy to keep him occupied while I do my video. And he's he's a chomper, so he makes a lot of noise. Anyway, I'm just going to tape this side. And then tape on the other side right there on the fold which makes this a little difficult maybe I can get it from the inside just to hold this together and I might Put a piece of tape across here to keep this seam from coming open because you need this to support your clay. My do, the new dog's name is Tucker and he is quite a handful but he's so cute. So there we have the sides of our box. Like I said, there it's square here. And you can maybe see through the bottom. It's square on the bottom, but the square goes in a different direction. So let me just come in so you can see what I'm talking about. See, this is the opening for the top or bottom. It doesn't matter. And you can see the top or bottom in the bottom of the box, which is at an angle. But that's what kind of makes it fun. So let me, let's see, that ought to be good enough. What I've done, oh, and I, I guess I ought to put the top or bottom, whatever you want to call this, on just to keep it square, because you need to keep this square. So I'm going to tape this, let me lay it down. So you want to tape the bottom on. And it doesn't matter which one is the top and which is the bottom. They're both the same. And I'm going to just fold that. Just mix, make, let it meet up with the sides. And it's easier... sometimes to lay it on the top and then fold it down. Do this on all four sides because you want to keep your box square. Okay, so now that will be the bottom. All right, so now we've got our box together. And what I've done is I rolled out some scrap clay. 
I keep a drawer, you know those little three, uh, the little plastic drawers, not little, but they're probably like 12 by 12 or 11 by 12, something like that, uh, that you buy at like Target or Walmart. They're Sterilite, I believe they are, that stack, and I got one that's it's about this big and about this tall with three drawers. And what that does is it, uh, I keep my I, things that I use a lot. I'm going to talk while I work. The things that I use a lot, I put in that box. So what I've done is one box is nothing but what I call scrap sheets. This is what this is. This is a brown mud. Sometimes you'll come up with brown. I mean, this is gray. Sometimes you'll come up with brown. And let me see. I'm going to use my smaller ruler to measure two inches. And I'll measure it in a couple of places so I can keep this Keep the line straight. And line up the ruler. Sorry if my hair got in the picture. So there's the two inches wide because this is two inches wide. And now I'm going to cut it nine inches long. So I'm going to mark it, and of course my phone's going to ring. Mark it there and here. Let's see if I got that right. The phone distracted me. I'm going to allow an extra inch. I'm going to cut this 10 inches long. And the reason I'm going to do that is to allow uh, extra room because when you wrap your clay around, around this, it's probably going to take up more than your 9 inches that you cut in your cardstock. Actually, I'm just going to cut this tail off and then I'll measure 10 inches from there. Since this was the ugly end. And this doesn't have to be a perfect straight line. I cut this 10 inches. But what I'm going to do with this, this is at the thickest setting of my pasta machine, and I did that because this is going to be our base, and it's got, it's got to be um, strong, because I'm going to take this cardboard out. But you'll take your clay and start forming it around your box. Now remember, it's square up here, but the point down, is down here on the bottom. So you've got to make sure you do the top and the bottom as you're forming it. See how I'm getting this crease here? And then I'll do another crease here. It's not really a crease as much as just forming it in the shape of the box. And come around to the other side and form that crease. Turn it to the other side. Now you can make your corners as sharp or rounded as you like. I'm going to try to get these pretty sharp. I don't know if I can or not, but we'll see. And 
and I pressed it down and made my mark so I'll know where to cut it. I ended up with more than nine inches left over. And get this to meet. Press your seam together. You don't want it to overlap, you just want it to meet. And here's where you can refine your corners. I'm going to turn it here and make a sharp corner. And I'm going to turn it this way and make a sharp corner. Now, in my notes, he went ahead and put the decorative clay on top of this, which I understand because it will um, stick better. I'm just trying to think whether it would be better to decorate this. before or after you bake the scrap clay. Now, I need to roll this through the pasta machine and I'll turn the sound off because I know some of you are sensitive to the noise, but I need to roll the scrap out so I have a piece for the bottom. So, I'll be right back with that. All right, my clay has been rolled out and I'm just going to set this on here and cut around it because you want this to come all the way to the edge of the bottom so that it will connect to your clay, your raw clay and be strong. I should have put this on a piece of cardstock when I started. Maybe I'll do that now that I've got it up so that I can turn it easily. So I'm going to trim this off and probably you probably saw me do one. I cut the corner because there's a sharp corner here that pokes out a little bit. So I'll just trim those off. So we, that must be the one I've already trimmed. And then this one. And here's where you can really perfect the shape of your box. I'm going to smooth this, not so that the seam doesn't show, because it doesn't really matter, because this is going to be covered with your decorative clay. But I'm, I'm doing that to I don't know why I'm doing it. It doesn't really matter, but I, I'm just one that always likes to smooth the seams. And I'll do the same thing here on the bottom once I make sure that all of this is attached really well, just press around with your fingers. And you can use your roller if you want to help a little bit. At least that will keep it smooth. And then go back with your fingers and I just want to make sure this bottom is attached because after this bakes I'm going to pull this cardboard out and I don't want the bottom falling off because I'm pressing on the pressing on the uh, side let me get a tool And just use this just to make sure that this seam is really a good seam. And I have, 
The hardest part of this for me was figuring out which texture sheet I wanted to use on my decorative clay, decorative layer. And I may as well use this to smooth this seam just a little bit more. I just don't want it to come apart when I pull the cardboard out. There. So there is our box. And I think I'm going to set it aside. I think I'm going to go ahead and decorate the outside. And what I decided to do was to get this, uh, just take some black clay, and I found this texture sheet that I just like it because of the, the spirals and the sun and everything, and it just makes an interesting design. And I'm going to probably, where's my water? Let me spritz, I think this is water. Just put a little just a little bit of water on here so that your texture sheet doesn't stick I mean, yeah and lay it on the clay and I like to lay a piece of whoops almost knocked my tiles in the floor oh here it is I was looking for my big paper I like to lay this on top so that um, the roller doesn't get stuck on the clay. And I'm just going to take this and I'm going to roll. And they say you should only roll once, but I'm going to go over it twice. I went over it once and then back over it. And I'm going to look and see how that did. That did pretty good. I'm going to roll it just one more time without the paper. I don't know that the paper really helped. You never know. And just take a paper towel and dab it just to get rid of the water. And what's down in the grooves will dry by the time we're doing something with it. Now you know this is not going to be long enough to go around the entire box. So I may um, trim this down a little bit. I'm going to trim off the excess black first. Whoops, I didn't, didn't cut that very straight, did I? I don't know if that angle is going to match my box or not, but I'll try it. Give it a try. This must have had some green on it. The texture sheet, because there's green. There it is. So let me just see if this is two inches wide. I'm just going to stab it with my needle tool there. You know to draw a straight line, if you mark two places and then draw a line between it, you'll be straight because it gives you two points of reference. Now I'll just lay my ruler on there right at those marks. Actually I think I'm going to come down a little bit to allow for the allow for the uh, bottom because I want this to cover that bottom.
and that's where my seam is there so I'll start on another side where there is no seam and of course this was not the right angle but that's okay because I can trim it off just lay it down Make sure your box is laying down on the clay and then you can trim it. Now you can do, you can cut these into triangles. You can take your template and just cut triangles if you wish. I didn't do a good job of cleaning my texture plate the last time I used it. But I just want to make sure this comes down over to the bottom. And do the same thing. Just make sure that you are covering, you know, you get your bends in your clay. I don't really need sharp corners. Alright, so I'm going to trim this off. Again, just make sure your box is all the way down on the clay. And you can, when we're finished, we'll trim this up a little bit. I'm just going to do it now, just so that part is done. I need a little bit more of the texture on the black. I don't believe this is going to be enough. Just barely too short. So again, I'm going to take this and run it through the pasta machine to get uh, a better size and I'll turn the sound off while I'm doing that. Okay, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Let me keep my scrap scraps and my black scrap in different places. And because this is a random uh, pattern, it's not that difficult to get it. You don't have to match each corner. And what did I do with my spritzer? Oh, here it is. Again, I'm going to just make sure that this is down in the clay. I'm going to roll it with my roller. Hold it down and then check. Yeah, it looks good. All right, so we're in good shape with that. Dab it with the paper towel to get up the excess water. off that edge measure I'm going to put two in a three sixteenths Just because that looks like where the pattern goes. Two and three sixteenths. This isn't straight. just cut these pieces off just because they're not straight and that should give us plenty the only problem I have with doing it in pieces is the seam but I'm going to do something to decorate the seam anyway 
so it really doesn't matter but I'm gonna lay this this is the next actually I'll lay this one down flat and see where it fits on here keep the bottom straight and I can cut this angle it didn't cut very well it's a little ragged but that's okay we can we can work with that and I'm going to put this on here and just feel my way around and make it stick to the other clay and there's my mark and our box is covered And again, we just trim up any excess. I don't know if you can see this or not. See where that just comes over a little bit. Just trim it off as long as it meets at the top. But you want this straight because we're going to do the bottom in black also. But just turn it around. Make sure your edges are straight. Yep, those work fine. Now, I am going to fix the seams, but I want to do something else first. I've decided I'm going to do some perfect pearls. And I'm going to use... They're so close. One of them is Sunflower Sparkle, and the other one is Perfect Gold. But I guess I ought to stick with Perfect Gold. Or maybe I ought to do the... No, i got to do this first. So I'm going to take the Perfect Pearls. Oh, I didn't make the bottom. I'll do that during the break. It's just doing it the same way as we did the other one. Sitting it on black and cutting it out, but I have to roll the black through the pasta machine again. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to take the perfect pearls. Now you can do anything to decorate this box. You can use canes. If you have canes that you like, you can use magume. Mogume Gane, Mokume Gane uh, for it. You can use um, a mica shift technique. You can do anything you want to cover your uh, cover your box, but I'm just going to do this. I'm going to color it gold. I'm using my finger you can even do these in different colors you could do one the bottom triangles in one color and the top triangle in, in another which might be kind of cool I might do that. I might use a red. But let me do all the gold first. So I'm going to do the bottom triangles in gold. If you'd rather use an applicator you can, but I find it goes on better with my finger. And 
And again, these seams are not going to matter because we're going to cover those. Just make sure you cover it over to the seam. And there's a little bit of water right there. Down in that groove, I don't want the perfect pearls sticking to the water and going down in the groove because then we'll lose our design. Feel free to fast forward through this. If you're bored watching me do all of my coloring. Alright, so that's all of the bottom triangles. I'm going to leave this out because I might use it somewhere else. Now I'm going to do, well, let me wipe my finger off first. Wipe off my paintbrush. <laughs> of course, all of your perfect pearls is going to come up, is going to end up being a pearl, a pearl type color. So even though this is perfect, perfect red, I believe, it's coming it up as a pretty magenta color like a magenta pearl and that's where you can see there was a seam in there that I didn't see but the perfect pearls finds everything I love perfect pearls perfect pearls works better than a lot of micas with polymer clay because it's got a resin in it which helps it stick to the clay and then when it's baked it really bonds with the clay so that you don't really have to put any kind of a protective finish over it unless it's something that's going to be getting a lot of contact with skin or you know going to be constantly rubbed I love this color. I haven't used this much. And I really like it. What is my little boy doing in there, I wonder? He got awfully quiet. Okay, and I kind of made a mess here. I believe this is, yeah, forever red, not perfect red, forever red. I really like that. And I'm going to clean up my space here a little bit so I don't get the perfect pearls all over everything. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I've got to redo the black. I'm going to go ahead and um, take a quick break while I do that and clean up my mess and we'll go on to make the bottom. I'll put the bottom on it while it's uh, while I'm on break and then we'll come back and we'll fix the, the seams and make a lid and then we'll bake it and we'll have our box. So I'll be back in just a few minutes. 
Okay, I am back, and I decided to go ahead. I put the bottom on my piece, and as you can see, all I did was sit it down on there like I did the uh, scrap part of it. Sat it down, sliced it, sliced around it, and then it's done. So I felt like I needed to take... Uh, to go ahead and release this inside so I went ahead so I baked it I baked it for an hour and this is primo so I baked it at 275 degrees and hopefully this will come out I should have put some wax paper or something in front of it Of course, with the bottom being a different shape than the top, it makes it a little difficult. But there you go. It all came out. And because I used a gray, it still looks nice on the inside. If you're not happy with the inside, then by all means, um, you know, you can cover that with clay too. But I just think that's fine. But this is nice and strong. It's been baked. So now let's put the, let me come back out just a little bit. Let me put the trim on here. I told you that I was going to um, trim those edges. So what I'm doing, you can see I extruded some clay, mainly because I don't roll, when I roll clay, it doesn't come out very, um, even. I'm a little heavy-handed so my fingers kind of dig into it. And I'm just cutting these into more manageable lengths. But you notice I doubled it. I've got two of these strands. Let me just move them out of the way except for the one I'm going to work with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this down to hold it and then I'm just going to twist and I'm going to twist this towards me you can also do this with three strands and just twist until it you have a nice size cord or whatever you want to call it it looks like a cord you can roll it after it gets started you can roll it And I'm going to take this and I'm going to lay it on these seams. And I'm going to stick with the black because I use black as my base. And then all of the little indentations from the um, where I wrote put the perfect pearls on is going to be uh, black. So I thought that was good. I'm going to start here so that I make sure I get the... Um, Get the seam covered and I was going to use I was going to use um, poly paste but I think because this is a little bit um, I'm sorry I'm looking for something I can't seem to find it since this is going to be a little bit more difficult I'll just use one of my little, I have a little thing that I use for my liquid clay. I'm just going to use this, which is a silicone bowl. And I probably should have shaken this. I'll just make sure that gets mixed into it because it's, this is Kato liquid clay. You can use any kind of liquid clay that you like. Let me get, I'm trying, I apologize for not having all this ready. I keep brushes that I use just for liquid clay. And hopefully there's a small one in there. I'll use this one. It's not very small. And I'm sure there's a small one in there somewhere. I just can't find it right just yet. So I'm going to use this brush, which is a little flathead brush. 
and I'm just gonna let me mix this up so that all that stuff gets mixed in and I'm going to just press this or put the liquid clay on here I probably would do better with a smaller brush And actually what I'm going to do is wipe off some of that clay that's on the outside. Hold on, this, I need to get a smaller brush. Please be patient with me, I'll be right back. I should have known this brush was in there, it just was hiding and I didn't get to see it. I just need a thinner bead of this liquid clay which is really why I prefer the poly paste because you just have a little more control over it but I'm going to make sure this goes down in that seam and I apologize if my hair is in the shot and I'm going to take Well, I'll just leave this in that I'm going to take this and I'm going to press it right on that seam. And then take my knife and I'm going to cut it right where the uh, Can you see I cut it right where the bottom right here. I've cut it where the bottom meets the sides. Because I'm also going to put one around the top and the bottom. So I'm going to cut that just a little bit short. Well, there. So then I'm going to do another one. Or actually, I think on this, what I'm going to do is paint it on the side of the strip. Just when you do this you have to be careful that it's where you want it to be. But we're having to use this because we are applying raw clay to liquid clay, I mean to uh, baked clay, and they don't stick very well together. So using a liquid clay or a poly paste or something like that will give you more of a stick they'll bond together when they're baked. I'm going to press this on right where these colors match or meet. Can't seem to talk today. I'm going to blame it on my new puppy dog. And trim that off. And trim right there. I believe there's enough of this left for one more. To just continue doing this all the way around. Okay, I've got all of my my seams covered. Now you can look at them and see if they look the way you want them. I did find that it was easier to paint the liquid clay onto the box and then lay, lay the uh, braid on top of it. It just made it a lot easier. But just make sure everything, is, you can even press it a little bit just to make sure you can look at the side I don't know if you can see but I don't know if you can see there's little where the braid is it sits up just a little bit so I'm just going to press that down so I can make sure that it's going to stick I 
think I did that one. This one needs to be pressed just a little bit. And it doesn't really mess up your braid design. It flattens it out just a little bit, but it doesn't need to be but so 3D. Straighten them all out. Now I do need a Q-tip because I've gotten extra liquid clay along here and the only reason I'm wiping it off is because when it dries it will be kind of a little bit shiny and I didn't want that shine. But before I do anything else, I'm going to stick this in the oven just for about 15 minutes, just long enough for this liquid clay to take hold. And then I'll be back. Okay, so here is our, my box so far with the braid going down each section here. And I think it's looking good. Uh, I am going to do the same thing across the bottom. I'm going to take one continuous strand and go around here unless it doesn't do well. In order to do that, I need to make sure there's enough room like these might come down a little bit too far. I may end up just putting a strip across each square. And then I was also going to do the same thing at the top. But I think, since I've already shown you how to do this, I think I'm going to hold off on that and go ahead and construct the lid. And then I can put my braid on and bake the lid and the um, box all at the same time. So the next thing I need to do is just look around these edges and see how this comes up a little bit and this isn't real straight but at the same time it looks pretty straight this way. There's a little bit of a scrap clay sticking up here. I really don't want the scrap clay to stick up above the black Because the you know the black is the main thing here. Now there's a lump there of both clays. This is a little bit right here where this sticks up a little bit, and that's just because it wasn't perfectly tight against that cardboard. But I want these to be kind of flat so that the top will fit properly. There. You could take some sandpaper. In fact, that probably wouldn't be a bad idea. If I knew where my sandpaper was. <laughs> thought it was in this drawer. But it's not, so I'm not really going to worry with it right now. But you could take... No, I thought that was it, but it's not. Maybe it's with my texture. No, they're not in there. It is around here somewhere. That's the only thing about organizing is then you can't, once you organize, you can't uh, find anything. But that's something you could do is get some coarse sandpaper and lay it on your work surface. And then, you know, go like this on it to make it nice and smooth. And it's really what I, excuse me, what I need to do. And this is also easier to do when your clay is a little bit warm as far as trimming it, but I had to pause to fix dinner. My daughter isn't 
only she's only home two nights a week so I only fix dinner two nights a week and tonight was one of those nights so we've had dinner And the only reason I'm doing this is because I want the top to fit well. And I'm thinking, um, I'm going to take a quick break and see if I can find my sandpaper and then I'll be back. Okay, this is not what I was looking for, but it is going to, it will work. This is some 80 grit um, sandpaper. And I'm going to spritz it with water. Because I don't want the, that's the end of that water. I hope I got more. I don't want the dust from the polymer clay to get up in the air. But I'm just going to do a circular motion. And I can see clay coming off on it. See how muddy it looks? That's the clay coming off. And it's funny because right there where that ridge is, it's not even touching the sandpaper. So you know it needs to be sanded a little bit. And I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to lay that aside. And I'm going to get... My alcohol and where'd my paper towel go? Oh, I think I threw it away because it was it had mica all over it. I'm gonna spritz some alcohol on my paper towel and just wipe this off. get the excess grit off. You could use water. Alcohol really does a good job of cleaning polymer clay and your work surface and anything else you need done. But I've rolled out some black on the th thickest setting of the pasta machine and I'm going to take the box and turn it upside down and press Make an impression of the box. Okay, you can see that. And what I'm going to do is trim just on the inside of that. Actually, that doesn't look very good. I probably ought to do it here. And I'll have to re-roll this clay. But let me just press this down again. And you can see my edges are not perfectly straight, and that's okay. But what I'm going to do is cut just a smidgen inside of that line. So that it will fit down on the inside here. So this will be on the inside. I'm just going to lay that aside. And excuse me for a minute while I re-roll this into a flat. I'll turn the sound off. Okay, um, I have to apologize to you. This is the next day from when I started this box. And in turning my camera on and off so I could cut the uh, sound out from my, running my pasta machine, I ended up getting it, the part, I never turned it back on when I made the top. So 
here is my top. I did pretty much the same thing, but let me tell you uh, exactly what I did. Here is my box with the braid on the sides and across the bottom. Then I cut another piece of clay, and because uh, because the uh, because this texture sheet was not going to be wide enough to do this, and I tried to make one, uh, trying to put them side by side, but there was a seam in the middle, so it didn't work. So I used a different texture sheet. I used a uh, Lisa Pavelka one that's one of my favorites. It's called Cloodle, and that's awesome. And I know you can get this at polyclayplay.com. But I really like that, so I, I stamped out my texture sheet, and then I just kind of used some of the red, the same red and gold, and then I put some bling on there. And I did it that way because I wanted to bake both of these at the same time. I wanted to bake the um, clay around the bottom and the top at the same time. I baked it upside down on a tile. I put this on top of it. And then I just took a, a piece of clay and actually it's one of these star pieces. I didn't even intend to show that anyway, but I made a little ball of clay. I cut out one of these uh, wheels or whatever you want to call it and laid it over top of the ball of clay and then I put a black stone in the top of it and it doesn't look like I centered it very well but what I'm going to do is just glue that here but which I haven't done yet and I but I will but I just wanted to show you um, I think I think it would go either way let me turn it goes on either way. But anyway, this is my top. And then I will put this on the top of it. And it's it's kind of got an oriental look with the way that I did this one. But just remember, you can use any type of um, any type of top. You could make it you could even wouldn't it be interesting to have a round top? Just maybe measure this distance. which would be three and a half inches. No, three and... three and a quarter inches. But do a circle, a three and a quarter inch circle, which would make it fit right around there. That would be kind of neat. And do the same thing. Decorate it however you want. One more time and found my super glue. This is my favorite super glue. It's called Loct Loctite super glue and it's a gel hopefully this hasn't dried up but you can I have more control over it because it's a gel see how it comes out instead of a little liquid I do however still wipe it off before I put my cap back on, but it's just a nice size. I like this better than the tubes. And I'm going to sit this right there in the middle and press it down just for a minute. Give it a chance to do its thing. But you can see my top is fairly thin, but it does have that square there. But that is my box. I hope you like it. I love this eight-sided box. I think it's just awesome. And I apologize that the top, making the top, got erased. I had the, had the camera on when I thought it was off and vice versa. So when I thought I was recording, I wasn't, and then I went to turn it off, and I had about eight hours of nothing but dark because my camera kept recording even though I had finished and left the room and turned the lights off. 
But that's the way my life runs sometimes. But if you'd like a heavier top, you could. I just felt like this was heavy enough. And I'll probably not use the top anyway. I'll probably just leave it the top off. But I really like this box. Hope you do too. So let me see the ones that you make. Uh, it's very easy to post them on my Facebook page. Um, you can... The link is below, so you can, you know, don't have a problem. Go on there and post what you what you make or send me a private message, anything. You know, I just like to see what some of you guys end up doing. So this is my eight-sided box. So thanks for watching. Come back again soon, and happy claying. Bye-bye.